Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. I'm Yaba and we are Ghana Bound. I want to introduce you guys to somebody who has moved from the UK to Ghana almost 20 years ago. Not only did her and her family relocate, but she built what was her vision into a reality and we're standing in it right now. So please introduce yourself. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Nana Gale and I'm originally from the UK uh, with Caribbean parenthood. And um, I moved to Ghana, as Yaba said, in around 2000, 1999. That's when I started my, my journey. Let's put it like that. Really excited. So today we're gonna find out more about you and where your journey started and how you are here today okay. as we walk around this, your beautiful school. Lovely, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, Nana Gail, what sparked that interest? Tell me a bit mm. more about yourself and your life in the UK before you moved to Ghana. Okay, well, I was born and raised in the UK and I did all my studies over there. And I think when I got to university, that's when I really had a sense of my identity because, you know, they don't really teach African history in mainstream school. So it's only when I got to university that I started to read about my real origins. And yeah, then I decided, well, if I'm from Africa, then I should, I should attempt, you know, to return and give something back to my, to my homeland. So yeah, that's where the journey really started. Whereabouts in the UK were you? Because we're now two UK raised people, so you can say specifics. <laughs> from, from London. Okay. From North London. Wow. Yeah. Where are you from? Is so I'm from? outside London, so Norfolk. Okay. Some of North you may not have heard okay. of it. Londoners yeah. don't know where that is. <laughs> I know where Norfolk is. <laughs> yes. But yes, yeah. So from North London. Yeah. Okay, amazing. So that sparked your interest into looking at African history. Mm -hmm. Did you find a lot of information? through your studies? Not so much through the studies, but through joining various groups and organizations and then through travel. So the first time I visited um, Africa, that was in my mid twenties, so a long time ago. <laughs> and I went to Senegal, the Gambia and Guinea Bissau. Wow. And I had a visa for Mali and Guinea Conakry, but due to some ill health and at that time the weather got really hot right and i had a dream that i went to mali and didn't come back so i decided not to not to go right okay but through those travels that really gave me um a sense of where i might fit in if i moved you know if i moved to africa and then also as a child i spent a lot of time in the caribbean right okay yeah. whereabouts in the caribbean are you from my mum was born in cuba and my dad's from a little island called Montserrat. Montserrat. So that was your background. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then what made you, when did you start thinking about Ghana as somewhere you could actually relocate to and stay? Okay, it was by chance really, because I had a very good friend who had a school um, in a village um, just beyond Unsawam. Yeah. And he wanted me to be one of the governors. So uh, at a certain point, point in time I had to come to Ghana and visit the school meet his family and so on and that was in 1998 so yeah that was my first time in Ghana wow. and um, when I came I met my husband <laughs> and the rest as they say is history wow. but I, I do kind of come and go so I came in 98 went back and then decided to leave my job in 1999 so that I could be here for Y2K, as okay. everyone talked about then. And since then, I spend a few months here and then I spend a few months in the UK as well. So that's how I've done it, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've been coming and going from the UK. Mm. And when did you put foot down to start building what is now your school? OK. Well, we'd been here for a number of years by that time. Um, we started the school in 2017. Yeah, 2016, 2017. But it was mostly my mum's idea. Yeah, because we used to homeschool. So we started off as homeschooling parents. And then when my mum came to visit in 2016 and she saw what we'd done mm. as homeschoolers, yeah. you know, we were very organized we had 
um, displays, educational displays on the walls. We had a school anthem. The children had a uniform. There was a timetable. You know, we were like a mini school already. Yeah. And she said, why don't you do a school? And at the time, that was the furthest from our thinking because we were already busy doing other things. Yeah. But, um, you know, as it would happen, um, she was elderly. And so in 2017, she became quite sick and then she mm. passed away um, at, at, at the end of 2017, towards the end of 2017. And us doing the school was her last instruction wow. to me as a child. And that was, you know, the school was the last thing she was interested in. It was the only thing she talked about yeah. in, the, in the last days. So when she passed um, at the end of 2017, um, in order to cope uh, with the first year, especially, mm. you know, we just threw ourselves into building because that's what kept me feeling close to her. Yeah. And I knew that it's what she wanted. You know, and she, she said that, um, she said, you can do it um, and it will be great. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so on that, on her say so, we decided um, <laughs> two crazy people were going to do to, it to build a school. Yeah. What was it like? What were some of the hurdles, shall we say, <laughs> to put it mildly, some of the hurdles you had to overcome to establish a school here? I wouldn't even know where to. Okay, I'd say that I'd say that if maybe being frank, if we'd known what was involved, mm. maybe we wouldn't have done it. Yes, I'll be honest. If if we'd known just how difficult and challenging it would be, mm. perhaps we would have thought twice. But um, coming from an emotional um, standpoint, it was just something that I had to do. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking about, um, you know, I didn't have a, a clear plan, let's say, laid out. Um, but the first challenge, of course, is building, getting the land. How was the that? Land. How was that? Because now that um, we're into yeah. lands, mm -hmm. we know the realities of that can be some, some challenges involved. Yes, How was yeah. it for you? Well, there was land here already, which we weren't doing anything with. But at the time, it's, it was a very undeveloped area. Very few houses um, around. There was no main road. The, the Pakwasi Interchange, that opened in 2021. Yeah, it's quite new. And before then, you know, most areas you'll say, this is an improvement. They've done this road and it's an improvement. Before they opened the interchange, there was no road. There was nothing. There was no road there from here no to like central central Accra. Well, to get down to the to the main road going into Accra, that could take about twenty minutes on taking sort of circuitous rough, yeah, <laughs> rough roads. But when they did that in twenty twenty one, that changed everything for the area and for the school because it means we're very accessible. Now. Ah. So land is one issue. Building, you know, getting getting something built. Yeah. Is, is a challenge and I think it's been it's meant everything to us that my husband is a contractor so oh, he, he is yeah. oh that must have saved you it's quite a saved bit quite a bit and you know he knows he knows what should be done um, sometimes if the workman didn't show up he would physically have do to it do himself. it yeah so he's there with the mattock <laughs> and, you know and the shovel and, and he knows that his and, hands were involved yes, he's actually doing it physically you know, um, the original painting we did as a family. You did it yourself. We did it ourselves. You know, our, our children painted some of the outside steps. They painted the classrooms. They painted um, the canteen. Um, yeah, this was the first thing that we had completed in the school. Yeah. So long before almost most of the buildings were um, plastered, long before anything was done, he said, let's put this image here mm. just to inspire us and tell us, well, this is what we're aiming at. Yeah. And eventually, then the rest of the compound will live up to this beautiful mural. Powerful. Yeah. And necessary to have it. It's like a vision board. It's like, yes. the, keep it in front of your yeah. eyes mm -hmm. and it will come about. Yeah. So not only did you come, you built a school, the relocation itself, mm. how was that? Was there a culture shock? Was there, how was it? 
Should we sit down and talk about? You know what? Let's. I've got a lot of questions. <laughs>